I'm Dr. Stephen Dominguez and today we're going to be talking about metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome was first described by Dr. Raven as an association between obesity and insulin resistance. In 2001, the American College of Cardiologists recognized that metabolic syndrome exists as a constellation of risk factors for cardiovascular disease. A remarkable federally funded research study known as the NHANES-3 or the 2002 National Health and Nutritional Examination Survey revealed that 20 to 24 percent of Americans suffer from metabolic syndrome. This is phenomenal. The, the range of 20 to 29 year olds with metabolic syndrome is 5 percent. For 60 to 69 year olds it's 45 percent. That's you and me. 45 percent of us. The risk factors for developing metabolic syndrome include hypertension, high cholesterol, high fasting blood sugar, a prothrombotic state, and a pro-inflammatory state. These risk factors work together, integrally, hand in hand, in order to develop a full-blown metabolic syndrome which will increase your risk factor for stroke and heart attack. Let's talk about elevated cholesterol. This means that your triglycerides are elevated, your LDL is elevated, and your HDL is low. Inflammation, you have an elevation in HSCRP, your CRP, your sed rate or ESR. The age-adjusted prevalence of metabolic syndrome components is clearly il illustrated in multiple graphs. Glucose. Let's talk about your pre-diabetic and diabetic state. We all know diabetes, high fasting blood sugars, high daily blood sugars, and high hemoglobin C. Well, what about pre-diabetic state? High fasting blood sugars and normal or borderline normal hemoglobin C. Clotting disorders. This leads to clot formation in blood vessels. This is due to proteins which are released by visceral or abdominal fat cells in leading to plasma activator inhibitor 1 proteins and interleukins and alpha 2 necrosis factor. Now the NHANES 3 study, age adjusted prevalence of metabolic syndrome components clearly demonstrate the percentage increases in men and women with age. Now your major underlying risk factors for metabolic syndrome, obesity and insulin resistance. Well how do we know about obesity? How do we know if we're overweight? The BMI chart and also your waist circumference. Less than 40 for men, less than 35 for women is ideal. The studies funded by NIH have revealed that if you lose 5 to 10% of your total body weight, if your BMI is greater than 25, you will significantly decrease your risk factors for heart disease and vascular disease. Now, the studies also show that thrombosis or clots decrease, your inflammatory markers that I described earlier decrease, and your endothelium or your vascular function increases, improves. This research has also revealed that the risk factors singularly are multiplied, not added together, so therefore the sum is greater than the parts. This is a rise geometrically instead of linearly. Now, the research also shows that metabolic syndrome progresses to and ultimately, ultimately ends in diabetes. Now, how do you know if you have metabolic syndrome? You must have three of five. One is elevated waste. Two is elevated triglycerides. Three is your blood pressure, systolic greater than 130, diastolic greater than 85, or your medications. You have an elevated in your fasting, blood sugar, and you have a low or decreased HDL, the good cholesterol. So, any three of those five, and you do have metabolic syndrome. So now, your risk is phenomenally increased. It, your risk normally will increase with age. Why? We have a sedentary lifestyle. We eat refined processed foods with slow protein, high fat, and moderate carb. That's what the ADA says. Look, switch all that around. You must increase your protein, decrease your fats, and maintain your carbs. And exercise. If you don't want the end stage of metabolic syndrome diabetes, you must lose. If your BMI is greater than 25, you must lose at least 5%, preferably 10% or more. Remember, your fat, your abdominal fat, your visceral fat is indeed an endocrine organ. Please look at the video on my fat is an endocrine organ. Take a look at the endocannabinoid system videos. Take a look at the protein videos. Take a look at why we eat what we eat and why we keep on eating. Let's take a look at the videos that I produce in order to help you become healthier. Don't become statistics. You don't want to have metabolic syndrome. This is disastrous. I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope you'll share this with your family, with your friends. God bless.